Well, it is indeed interesting to see th that innovation is starting to pay back for various organizations and hope that they can take this innovation beyond just the circle of members and indeed start to commercialize those entities and assist many other farmers who are out there who may need the same sort of innovation to drive efficiency and productivity. Well, away from that conversation and one to which business will find very interesting, the one about trust uh, corporate governance engagement, that sort of thing. Now, recently, uh, the launch of the Edmund Trust Barometer here in Nairobi uh, brought about a discussion where the, very, the trust that has been put in various entities has been brought into sharp focus. And the question for most people has been why, those, uh, why some uh, entities are trusted and why others are not, and what exactly uh, this has in terms of effect on business uh, the cost of doing business and the business environment. Now, to answer those very questions here in the studio, uh, Lona Irongo, she is the general manager at Jinedine Corporate Communication. Karibu sana. As said. Yes. So first off, talk to us very quickly about what the barometer is about, okay. uh, why it's important, uh, why we even need a barometer in the first place. Okay, thank you very much for, for taking the time to have a chat with me about this. So the Edelman Trust Barometer was started by this, uh, the largest actually global PR firm mm -hmm. called Edelman Group. And this has been going on for the last 18 years. And one of the things they asked is, in association to why do people do business? Mm -hmm. So why, why, why do you pick a brand over something else? And it came down to trust. And so for the last 10 years, they've been looking at the different nuances about trust and businesses. Some of it is, what's the rise of innovation? How does that build trust? Some of it was the rise of the superstar CEO a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. Over the last three years, there's been a trend and the trend has been really around sharp focus brought around the loss of trust uh, and last year was the battle for trust this year is the battle for truth mm -hmm. last year was a loss of trust now Edelman PR started uh, in the United States and they now have uh, offices across the globe yes. but when you understand what is happening in the US and kind of what that nuance happened and what that shift has been with social media you can begin to understand where a conversation around trust would come mm -hmm. and that directly affects businesses because whereas before as a business you knew if you wanted to communicate to your consumers your customers your audience you either went to television or radio but now there's a whole proliferation in social mm -hmm. media and the mm -hmm. digital space how does that impact what you do and how you do business yes. so that's the background of it mm -hmm. now they had never done a survey in Africa. Yes. Uh, they actually, the first time they did a survey was in South Africa two years ago. So they've done that twice. And this year, because they're looking at expanding across the region, they were like, we want to do one in East Africa and really focus on Kenya mm -hmm. as the hub. So as Gina Dean Communications, we've partnered with Edelman PR to think of what that does and what that means. So part of it was to look at how do we compare with what the global trust barometer talks about mm -hmm. and some of the global needs. And the best lesson for us was it's not that different. Mm -hmm. So talk to us then about some of those findings. It is interesting to see that uh, there are so many similarities. Yes. And yet in some instances, there are sharp divisions, uh, sharp uh, uh, differences with some other parts of the world. Talk to us about what exactly these highlights are. Okay, some of the highlights that stood out for us in the report is uh, trusting government has dropped across uh, a lot of some of the other sectors. So if you look at the West, the US has had huge drop, 23 points in trust mm -hmm. in actual in government, which is huge. Mm -hmm. They have never seen a drop of that magnitude. Uh, an interesting shift is as trust has dropped in China, uh, I mean, in, in, in the US in government, it has risen in China mm -hmm. by almost similar amounts. So there's a question there about who's taking over and, yes. and about a vacuum. Across Africa, there seems to be an average uh, trust in government. So compared to some of the other parts of the world, government is actually trusted on the continent. And this did not differ very much uh, from what has happened with the exception of South Africa, which if you understand what has happened there over the last year, yes. then it makes sense. So there was growth in trust. Uh, there was trust in, in government. Now it's not at the top, but it's not at the bottom either. Mm -hmm. There was also a decline in trust in business. So business is actually uh, losing out to people like government. Mm -hmm. The highest trusted institutions across Africa are NGOs. Yes. Media, surprisingly, mm -hmm. is actually trusted. Mm -hmm. They're almost at par as government. So there's a question there about the fact that this is happening. And across the world, we see that trust in media uh, has dropped, in traditional media has dropped, trust in platforms has risen. Yes. Now, when we look at the nuanced case here in Kenya, trust people are looking more to platforms to get their news than they are actually looking at mainstream stuff. So there were some interesting things. Mm -hmm. If you unpack some of those, uh, an interesting indicator for us of the trust in uh, packed goods, consumer goods, yes. is actually one of the lowest 
Really? Across the board. People don't... You'd expect it to... Because it you'd runs. expect it, but then there's a question there about counterfeit goods and are you buying what you're buying so when you look at the numbers and then understand what's happening in the market you see a direct correlation mm -hmm. uh, trust in financial institutions has dropped yes. which we understand what's happening around kind of you mm -hmm. kind of understand but trust in manufacturing has gone up yes. and one of the most interesting for us was trust in the health sector yes. is very high let, let's talk then very quickly about and what you've just said, especially for brands, because this mm -hmm. is very, very important. Mm -hmm. We've seen instances in the recent past where even the Kenya Revenue Authority is going out and saying, we want to introduce uh, uh, this sort of uh, stickers yes. uh, because this will enable you authenticate the goods Absolutely. that you're buying. We've seen a lot of counterfeiting. We've seen Absolutely. allegations of uh, substandard goods. What then do brands start to do to start building their credibility? How can they consume this report and in a way that enables them to start to gain back this trust? So a part of the conversation there looks at exactly what you've talked about. What are the mitigating measures you need to put in place mm -hmm. to ensure that your product stands out? Yes. And then a very key element of this, how are you communicating those issues? Mm -hmm. More and more we find that when people seem to find themselves in a problem, they tend to not want to talk about it yes. and, and, and kind of keep it under the radar as they try and fix it. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing more and more and more in the data supports this is that people are actually willing and uh, this is a real number 60 percent are willing to pay more for something more expensive mm -hmm. than they are for something cheaper so there's a question there of how are you doing what are the things you need to do to align yourselves with what the market needs so cab stickers you know carry that kind of stuff so that i can actually have as a consumer i can have a recourse and say wait a minute it's certified why isn't it matching the standards but also how do you then communicate that you're doing those needs mm -hmm. the communication now is not just putting up billboards and everything uh, some data came back and said that there's more than 70 percent of our consumers are on social media yes. how well are brands and businesses using that space mm -hmm. to effectively communicate challenges and also respond. Mm -hmm. uh, global data talks about the fact that 74% of people expect an answer uh, within an hour yes. of complaining on something like Twitter. Mm -hmm. Are businesses actively following this or are we behaving and waiting for, oh, there's a report, it has to be summarized. Yes. By the mm -hmm. time you come back a week later, the damage yes. is done. Yeah, so final question. Yeah. Uh, thought leadership and the fact that this seems to be the flip side of this trust conversation because yes. If brands then get into a place where they create knowledge about their brands, then uh, move uh, users to experiences, uh, then create a brand love, eventually put themselves in a way which they become the authorities on that product or that sector. Absolutely. And would start to resolve some of these situations. Where do you think uh, brands in this country ought to go in regards to that and this report? So there's something about your brand. And your brand is your products, plus what your consumers say plus the stories they tell, that's your brand. Yes. And at that point, what are the stories that your people are telling? Mm -hmm. How are you shaping that story? Because mm -hmm. if you're not telling your story, someone else is. Yes. And that's what we do at Gina Din. Mm -hmm. That's why we are targeting shaping African conversation. What's the conversation people are having about your brand? Mm -hmm. I think more and more we find that people put out information but don't want feedback. Yes. It is about having a conversation and that allows you as a business to understand where your consumers are, what they believe, where your gaps are. But it's not, it's a business conversation. It's mm -hmm. not a, uh, the social media guy conversation. It's not yes. another department. As a business, this needs to be an integral part of how you start thinking about your brands. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, Lona, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I think uh, that the, the, most people should uh, start to look out for the report, especially on the basis of what it does mean for businesses and for various uh, brands. And we'll indeed look into uh, digging deeper into that conversation later on. Thank you very much for You're your time. You're very welcome. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. But indeed, the uh, viewer, that apparently is all the time we had for the, this show today. Of course, in just a few minutes, the news in Swahili on the Mbiyuya KTN show. We will be back at the same time tomorrow again, tomorrow afternoon, with more from the world of business. But from us here, it is Kwaheria Kwanana. My name is Peter Okaba. To continue to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.